Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the basics surrounding networking and communicating over networks and specifically we're going to look at Wi-Fi networks and how to communicate with your various devices over Wi-Fi. In a recent video we looked at this device here on the right which is an Arduino that has built-in Wi-Fi. We showed how that device works, how to configure it, how to program it, and how to hook it up via USB to your computer and upload a sketch that in fact will go through and search all of the available Wi-Fi networks and print out the results to show you what are the available Wi-Fi networks that it can see. In future videos in this series, we're going to look at how to disconnect that USB and connect with this Arduino. We're also going to look at a Raspberry Pi, how to connect with those devices over Wi-Fi with your computer, how to program them, and how to communicate back and forth, send commands, and receive data over Wi-Fi. Now in this video, we're going to talk about some of the very important basic concepts surrounding networking and Wi-Fi communications that are going to be critical in understanding how to set up these networks. And um, in the future, we're going to look at how to write software for your computer, for your Arduino, for your Raspberry Pi, to allow it to communicate over Wi-Fi. But first, in this video, we're going to look at some of the basic concepts. We're going to look at what you see here, where we've got things called TCP, clients and servers, internet protocol, IP addresses, ports. And we're going to look at all those basic concepts that are going to be so important if we're going to be writing software for these to allow them to communicate. So to start off, let's look at an analogy where we've got two smartphones that we're going to communicate with. And let's say you have one smartphone and you want to call up a friend on another smartphone. So what's the basic thing you need in order to call somebody else a smartphone? Well, you need to be able to dial their number. So you need to have a phone number, which is kind of an address for that other device that you can enter into your device to say, hey, call the other device at this number so we can communicate. And when we're talking about network communication over Wi-Fi, it's very, very similar. We're going to need to have an address for a device if we're going to talk to it. So as an example, here we've got our computer. And let's say we want to talk to that computer. We need some sort of address like a phone number. Typically what we're going to use is what's called an IP address. And it's a sequence of numbers like you see here, IP standing for Internet Protocol. So, and it's very much like a phone number, but it's used for network communications. So we're going to have to figure out IP addresses for our device that we're going to network together. Now, there's other things we're going to need. And let's take as an example to help us understand it. Let's say we've got this big, tall skyscraper with many floors. And it's housing offices and maybe apartments. And we need to communicate with it. So the first thing we need is we need an address. So it's like what street, what city, and what state is it in? And that's a little bit like having an IP address. It tells you where that device is or where that building is located. What's the street, city, and state that it's located in? So we're going to need that, but, but that only gives us a way to, for example, mail a package or a letter to the building, but we still have to figure out where in the building we're going to send it so that it gets to the right apartment or it gets to the right office. And here we've got many, many floors, so we're going to have to say, hey, wait a minute, I've got the main address for the building, but I still need to have an address for each of the floors and apartments or offices. So, for example, we're going to need, um, like if there's an office on the first floor, office number 25, and maybe one on the 16th floor, office number 12. So, depending on where we're going to send it, we're going to have to have the main address, plus we're going to have to have kind of an address for the floor and the office or apartment number. And that is very similar to dealing in computer networking. We've got our device that has an IP address, but also we have multiple pieces of software running on this computer and we might be sending data to this computer, but we want it to go to specific pieces of software. So for example, let's say on our computer, we are looking at a website 
like YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, we need to be able to send data over this network connection, but we need to address it to a specific piece of software, like a web software. Or maybe we have email that we need to address it to that software. Or maybe we're sending files, we need to address it to that software. Or maybe in the engineering world, we're doing data acquisition over the network and we need to send it to the data acquisition software. So to do that, we have what are called ports. And ports tell you what specific software you need to send that data to. And here's just some typical examples. There can be up to 65,536 different ports on a single computer. So as you can see, there's many, many different choices you can use to specify the port that your software is running on. But if we're going to be writing software for our devices, we're going to be, need to think about port numbers. So now we've got a computer that's got an IP address, which is like a phone number or a street address. And then we've got the software running on the computer that's got different ports for running different software that's all accessing the same network. We also are going to be connecting to Wi-Fi. So that's more information we're going to need. And if you know anything about Wi-Fi, when you connect to a Wi-Fi signal, you want it to be secure. You don't want to just have anybody connect to your local Wi-Fi because you can have bad people getting in there and doing bad things. So you need to have not only an ID called an SSID, but you also need to have a password. So now we've got, we need to know about IP addresses. We need to know about ports. But in order to connect to the Wi-Fi, we need to know what the Wi-Fi ID is and what the password is. And as we showed in the previous video, where we programmed our Arduino with Wi-Fi, it showed us all the different SSIDs. It scanned the local Wi-Fi signals and showed us all the SSIDs, but we're also going to have to know what the password is. So there's a lot of stuff we need to have in order to connect via Wi-Fi. Now, regarding ports, we said there's about 65,536 possible port numbers. And there is an organization called Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, called IANA, that kind of coordinates a lot of these numbering systems on the Internet. And regarding ports, there are different categories of ports that you can utilize. For example, system ports are generally from 0 to 1023. And if we're going to grab a port, we probably want to stay outside of that range. There's also user ports from 1024 to 49,151. Those are ports that we can probably look into if we want to set up our software to operate over our own port. We're probably going to want to look in that range. There's also dynamic and or private ports, which go 49,152 to 65,535. There's a whole bunch of ports available, and we just need to figure out what we're going to utilize. So now if you want, you can go to the IANA.org website, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, and they have a list of service names, port numbers, and that's updated recently. And you can look at, here's the port numbers here, service name, and here are some of the assigned port numbers. Um, but we're going to look through this and choose some port numbers for our software to operate on. Now, another thing we need to talk about is the different protocols. And if you think about the word protocol, it's basically a series of steps you need to do in order to make something work. So there's two main protocols we're going to look at. One is UDP, or User Datagram Protocol, and one is TCP, which we're going to be using mostly, and that is Transmission Control Protocol. Here's a, a simple visual description of the difference between UDP and TCP. UDP is a, a fairly unreliable protocol. And basically, it's, it's kind of like a broadcast, where in this case, we've got our computer sending out over Wi-Fi some data, as if he's saying, here's some data for anyone who's interested, just broadcasting it over the network, but not keeping track of who gets the data and verifying them and getting any feedback on, yeah, I received this data and uh, send me more data or anything like that. It's basically just a broadcast over the network. Whoever wants it can grab it. It's kind of like it's your supermarket. Somebody makes a public announcement, um, clean up on aisle three, and whoever needs to get the information grabs it. Other people ignore it. 
That's UDP. On the other hand, there's TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol. And this is more formal and more, much more reliable because it keeps track. For example, if our computer sends data to a client, it knows the client is there, it keeps track of the client, and it keeps track of the data that was sent. And the client says, oh, I received that data and send more data. And it's kind of a very consistent protocol and very reliable protocol because the data is not going to get lost because you're keeping track of it and the client is telling you, hey, I received it. So it's, we're going to use that because it's a very reliable protocol. So now we've got, in our example that we're going to use, we've got our computer, which we're going to call a server, and we've got our Arduino, which is going to connect to the server, and we're going to call that a client. So what's the difference? Well, in our case, we're going to have this server, and basically what it's doing is it's always running, and it's always listening for clients. So for example, this client could be turned off, this Arduino or Raspberry Pi could be turned off, but the server is always running and listening to see if anybody wants to connect to it. So our server on our computer is always going to be listening to the Wi-Fi, and any time we start up our Arduino or our Raspberry Pi or our data acquisition device, it's going to send a message to our server, say, hey, I'm here, I need to talk to you, and they're going to do a protocol where they get everything set up and start exchanging data in a very reliable manner. So we've got our server, which is always listening, and we've got our client, which connects to the server, and they do a protocol, what's called a handshake, and make sure that they're clear on what's going to happen, and then they start communicating. And we're going to have our IP addresses. Here we've got a 192.168.0.2. Here we've got a 192.168.0.12, and it's got port numbers. So these are the basic concepts we're going to need if we're going to be talking via Wi-Fi over a network. So now I also want to briefly mention some tools we're going to be using. Uh, as we said before, we're going to be needing IP addresses and port numbers, and there are some tools that we can use. Um, one of them is built into Windows that will allow us to get some better insight into what's going on. You can see here, I've got a um, C-sharp application we're gonna be developing in the future on our main computer, our server. And we're going to use what you see in the background here, which is a Windows PowerShell, and you have to run it as administrator. I'll assume you know how to do that. Just search for Windows PowerShell and run it as administrator. You get this kind of command line. and what I'm going to do, I've got, um, as you can see here, I've got the application running on my computer as a server, and it has started the TCP listener, so it's listening for clients to connect over Wi-Fi. And you can see it's accepting clients on port 49002. It's kind of a randomly chosen port that we think is going to be unused by other software. And right now it's just sitting there listening on the Wi-Fi for devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Raspberry Pi and fire up a bit of software that we're going to write in, the, in future videos. And it's going to connect over Wi-Fi and try to connect to the server over port 49002. And then we're going to go to this PowerShell and get some more insight into what actually is going on. So now you can see what I've started is my Raspberry Pi and it's connecting. And every second, the server is sending a request to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is sending a response of OK. Round trip time is about six milliseconds. And what we can now do, now that these are connected and communicating, we can go to this uh, PowerShell and get a little bit better insight. We're going to use a command, a get net TCP connection. It's going to look at the local port 49002 and see what's going on. And you can see we have um, the remote device, our, our Raspberry Pi is 192.168.0.13. And it's got a re remote port number here. And it's established and we're in listen mode and the local device is 192.168.0.2. So this is just one of many applications we can use to get better insight into what's going on in our network. So now that we've got the basic concepts understood, in the next video, we're going to start the all-important design process. And it's the part of this where 
most uh, novices and newbies just kind of jump over it and start writing code. And uh, especially in this case, if you do that, you're going to get into a big mess. So we're going to design it. We're going to figure out what the challenges are, such as if we write our C Sharp application and this server is always listening, uh, you're going to lock up the user interface and we're going to have to figure out how we can do this, what's called asynchronously. We're going to have to figure out timing issues and making sure these things are connected and what happens if you disconnect. So um, I encourage you to stick around for the next part in this series where we're going to talk about those things and design it. And then after that, we're going to write software for our server, our Arduino sketch to connect over Wi-Fi, and also a Raspberry Pi sketch to connect over Wi-Fi and show you how to get this all running. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.